And it is time to talk of the contract. Even the most rewarding and successful careers, you know, can sometimes leave a person wanting for more, wanting at least a change. And that brings us to our next guest. Sheila Grinnell had a 40 year incredible career as a creator and curator of science museums all over the globe. Now the former CEO of the Arizona Science Center reinvents herself and is here to talk about uh, her latest book, your second work of fiction. This is The Contract, so congratulations to you. Thanks so much. What an incredible journey to have such a successful career in such a precise field where you must be, you know, in demand all over the place and then decide, you know what, now is the time I'm going to transition to storyteller. 40 years is a very long time and I managed to accomplish what I wanted to do mm -hmm. and being here in Arizona has just been the, the icing on the cake. And then I said, you know, I'm done and there's something else I need to do. This wasn't quite sure what it was, but what happened was my mother had a stroke and it took away her thinking and took away her personality. And I said, oh, you know, I have to write her personality. I have to write her story. So I did, and then I realized I wanted to write more. And then I started. I think people really respond to the concept of reinventing yourself and, and being uh, enough of a courageous risk taker to try something new, especially as a successful woman like you. I mean, you're, you're a Harvard woman, right? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you anything that you pursue, you want to excel at naturally. That's the type of person you are. Right. So at what moment in time do you realize, I have a knack for this? Ooh, you don't realize it right away. I just realized I wanted to do it. And you know what? Being a successful person is what made it possible. I never had writer's block. I figured, I can flop at this. I've already been useful to the community. Ah, okay. So I'll just go ahead and try. And, and that's, that's a what little I did. freedom there, huh? Freedom. I also found that some of the things that I learned in my first career applied in this one as well. How so? I knew how to stick to a schedule and budget. I knew not to second guess myself all the time. Mm -hmm. I knew that when I was out of my league to go get expert help, mm -hmm. those same habits worked in, the, in fiction as well. Well, yeah, when you're starting to sit down, you hear about people, as you mentioned, a writer's block. You're looking yeah. at a blank page and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, how exciting, how mm -hmm. terrifying, right? Mm -hmm. It either right. is gonna go somewhere or go nowhere quick. Right. Um, when you are starting a project to build a science museum or help mm -hmm. others figure out how to do so, I mean, that is same thing, blank slate. Right. Where do you begin? Right, it's also blank slate. I think that's why, probably why I always liked it. But the, when you're starting the museum, you got a lot of other people. Okay. You have staff, you have a board, you have the image of visitors that you want to. You're not alone in the world. When you're staring at the computer to write fiction, it's just you. You and your unconscious. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference between my two lives. Okay. In the first life, I felt I was sort of organized vertically and I was moving straight ahead. In this life, it's horizontal and I don't know when uh, inspiration is going to pop up because I'm giving my unconscious room. Some of this uh, inspiration came from a journey of your own, doing some work in Saudi Arabia, helping yes. to craft some museums. Uh, tell us about Joanna and about the book. Joanna is a hard driving designer. I put her in the museum world. And she wants to break through in her, the man's profession. And so she's going to try to get a job in Saudi Arabia, even though everybody around her says, oh my god, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I want not, her business partner is her husband. He's very different. He's kind of he just likes to make things, and she's she thinks this is going to this is going to work. Well, it's not going to work out the way she imagined, but you have to read the book okay. to find out. And the reason it's in, in Saudi Arabia, well, I was using experiences mm -hmm. I had. What kicked me off on this book was um, I overheard a conversation. A friend of mine, a very lovely, kind, generous woman, was talking to her sister, absolutely contemptuous, and I thought, wow, you know. How come she's not tolerant with her sister yet? When and how do people become tolerant? Oh, I can use my experience in Saudi Arabia as a counterpoint if we're talking about developing tolerance. That's so I have perfect. Joanna lives in Oakland, California, and she goes to Saudi Arabia. We'll leave it there. That's a very good, very good hook here. Sheila, thank you so much and congratulations. And uh, thank you also for your work at the Arizona Science Center and for the impact on this community in so many ways. My pleasure. Appreciate it. The book